In order to see our card on a page anywhere, well, I need to work on some views, of course. I want to display it in my header where I have my shopping cart link. This one here, I want to have a badge next to it where I see how many items are in the shopping cart or if it is empty. And of course, I'll need a new view to, well, see my overall shopping cart. So I'll do both. I'll start with the badge in my header and I'll bring down my console for that so that we have more space here. And of course, I'll first reformat this a bit so that we can see this a bit clearer. So after the shopping cart text, I want to have my badge and I can use the bootstrap badge class for this. And I can access my session. If you remember this, I was exposing it in the app.js here. I'm setting session to be available in all my views. So I can access my overall session. I can of course therefore access my card. And in this card I have the total quantity. And that's all. And now if I reload my page, you already see we have three items. And if I add a new one, we get four. So that already works, great. But of course I also want to make this link work that we're taking to the shopping cart and see something there. So back in my editor, I'll add a new view in my shop file here, a folder, and I'll name it shoppingcart.hps. Now in this shopping cart, I'll first grab my bootstrap um, rows here or my bootstrap classes, also close them of course, some help from my IDE here. And I'll make this a bit bigger here. Let's make this like that. And also provide some offsetting to have it nicely centered. And that's all styling here, some basic bootstrap styling. Now in here, I want to have my product. So I want to have a list group. This again is a bootstrap class. And each list item should get the list group item bootstrap class to give it some nice styling. And then each item in my list should have a badge. So this will always appear on the right here, even if you specify it somewhere else, or even if you specify it, uh, no matter where you specify it, that's all I'm trying to say here. Next, I'll not only have my badge, but I also will have another span where with the title of my item and I'll just give this some um, inline style or I'll just make it strong. Let's make it bold here. So this should be the shopping cart item title. This should be the number like two, for example, just some dummy text here. Then I'll have a span with the class label and then label success as well. Just uh, this is a nice little green label. These are all bootstrap items here. So here I want to have the price in dollar, like 12, for example. And then I'll have a button group here. So that's again, bootstrap. And this button group allows me to create a button which will act as a dropdown. Now this button here should get the class button, button primary and button XS, as well as the class dropdown toggle and I'm using Emmet, which is a plugin which allows me to quickly create all my elements like this just by typing them with the like you saw it and then hitting tab to create the readily configured element. And well, this will be my uh, drop down button, just give it a label of action, make it of type button. And this looks good and I also want to have another bootstrap thing here. I want to have this little uh, down pointing arrow, which I get with this span with the class caret here. Caret, I don't know how it's pronounced. So this will just be the arrow pointing to the bottoms to indicate that this is a drop down button. So that's all bootstrap and you can copy that right from the bootstrap page by the way. So that's my button here. And of course, I also need to define what should be the drop down. So drop down menu here. And here I'll then have a list item with a link and I'll add those links later in the series. And basically I want to be able to either reduce the quantity by one 
or remove all. So that are just some quick links in my shopping cart to quickly change the amount of a certain item or get rid of it entirely. So that's that. The next part is, and I'll just copy all of that, but then strip out everything, the whole unordered list, just have the row and the columns. So the next thing is I want to have a total price, again with a strong tag. This should be, give me my total price. Then copy that. I have another line where I want to, well, let's first say we have a horizontal line here with the HR tag. And then I want to have a line with a checkout button. So this will be a button of type button and with a class of button, button success, checkout. And that didn't work the way it should, no, no problem. So I'll add it by hand, type button. And lastly, I'll have another part on this view here where I want to be able to say, no items in cart because you might click on shopping cart when it is empty. And of course, I'll wrap this with some if conditions later on to only show the right portion. Good, so that is the view. And with that, I can create a new route in my index.js file. So I'll create it here, router get, and I'll just name it shopping cart. Have the well-known function here. And I'll first check if I do have a card or to be precise, a check if it is not set in the session, because in this case, I want to render the shop shopping cart view. Yes, but I'll pass products to be null. So that will later be that what I check with my if condition to know if I actually do have products in my cart or not. If we pass this check, so we seem to have a card, then I'll create a new card of the card stored in my session. And of course, the card should be existing here since I checked if it is set. And then I'll also render this shop shopping card view here, but I'll pass some things as arguments. I'll have my products, which should be using my generate array method. So I'll get a list an array of my products in the cart of the product groups to be precise. And I'll pass my total price as cart total price, of course. And that is all I need in my cart. So with that, the route is set up and I can try this out if I restart my server and I head over there, reload my page and I click on shopping cart. This won't work because maybe I should also go to my header and wire this up. So here I'll add the link and I was naming this shopping cart, right? So let's save this reload everything, click on it, and we see the shopping cart, though of course only with our dummy text, not the real shopping cart. So I'll take care about this next. To add items to our shopping cart and not only display those dummy, well, text and then items here and so on, um, I need to do some extra steps. So I'm already retrieving all my data and I'm passing it to this view, but I'm not displaying it here. Of course, that shouldn't be the hardest part, right? So I'll go back to my shopping cart view. And the first thing I'll do is I'll check if I have products because, just a second, remember that in my routes file, I was passing products to be null if we don't have a shopping cart. So if we have products here, then I know we seem to have a shopping cart, it's not null. Otherwise, and that's why I'll have an else statement here, well, I'll do something else. So the part, if we do have a shopping cart, is of course this code. So I'll insert that here. And I'll only display this part here if we don't have products in our shopping cart. 
So that's great. I now also need to loop here in my unordered list. I'll do this with a each loop, of course, products. So I'll loop through all my products and I will create a list item. So a list entry for each product. Then I can access the quantity of each product. And remember, product always means a group of that product. So the quantity will be the quantity of that single product and so on. I can also access my title. So this title or this item title to be precise, because remember in my card here, we have our items. That is what we're looping through. But each item or this items thing there again then has the quantity, the price and the individual item itself. So that's important to keep in mind. So I'll have to access the item to get the title. The price is available on my uh, top level on this items array itself. So this price and with that I'm filling out all the product specific or entry specific data. The next part is of course down here where I have my total price. I want to output that as well and I can output total price since I'm passing that here. So since I haven't changed any server side code, if I now reload my shopping cart, that looks pretty good. We see Call of Duty with a price of 120 free uh, items of it. And if we check this, three times 40 is 120 sounds right. If I add a new one and go back, we have 160, four items, Wall of Warcraft one times and so on. So that is our working shopping cart. And if I now remove my session again, like that, reload my page. If I go to shopping cart, we see no items in cart because now it's empty. And if I start to add items again, we again see them here. And oh, in order to get this drop down to work here, I'll still net need to add something here. Forgot that. So back in the shopping cart view, one important thing I need to add to this button here is the data toggle attribute, which will basically tell Bootstrap to well use the appropriate JavaScript to make this clickable and display it as a dropdown. So now if I reload here, yes, now this works. So that's the working shopping cart with the working shopping cart view. And of course, checkout is not included. We're not able to manage it. We can't click those links. But that are all things that we'll do in the next step. But the first step here was very important. We're able to build a shopping cart to fill it. And you know the logic how this was done. And this, of course, is something you should be able to apply to whatever project you need, something comparable. So I'll see you in the next videos and wish you a good day. Bye.